Get your advanced copy of my new book, The Body and the Cosmos at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of September 15, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And really, as we start this week, we are buzzing about Saturn turning direct. In fact, as we start this week, Saturn appears to be standing still in the sky, will go direct right around Wednesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. That's the official direct, but we are going to be feeling the strength of its energies all week and as we start this week as well. Now, Saturn is an energy of stability. It's an energy of being able to see things from a practical lens, but more than that, I think of Saturn as a sacred teacher of honoring the physical plane, honoring the incarnation. A lot of emphasis, especially in spiritual circles, is focused on Jupiter and Neptune, and they are doing interesting things this week as well. But it is Saturn that reminds us that we are embodied for reasons. We live physical lives, we are on Earth, for a reason and it isn't necessarily for all of us to um, just say that the physical doesn't matter and it's an illusion and they're going to focus entirely on spirit most of us don't get that opportunity most of us are asked to live the life of a modern mystic and a more integrated holistic understanding of living our physical existence it is to recognize the spiritual but also to recognize the fact that we are in the earth school, as, uh, as Gary Zukov calls it, for a reason as well. And they don't have to necessarily be at odds. They can find a way to be integrated and to work together. And it is Saturn ultimately that reminds us of this, but also with Saturn, I think of Saturn connected to self-respect, connected to integrity and integrity of our actions. It's one thing to feel it, it's one thing to believe it, it's another thing to actually act from that place of feeling. And again, this goes back to Neptune and Jupiter. Both of those planets are very strongly feeling oriented. It has been said that Jupiter needs Saturn in order to manifest. And so in some way they complement each other, they actually help each other. But it is ultimately taking that inspiration, taking that feeling and being able to do something with it. Well, that doing is where self-respect is found. It's truly the definition of integrity to say that you are whom it is that you believe yourself to be. Well, that's beautiful. But to actually live it in all of your moments to the best of your human ability, that's Saturn. And it really is to the best of our human ability. We're never gonna be perfect. We are not enlightened beings. I'm gonna say that right there. We are not, because if we were, we would no longer need to be incarnated. We'd no longer need to be in physical, uh, physical spaces and places and, and incarnated as physical beings. We are incarnated as physical beings because we are learning about enlightenment, about love, about wisdom. We're learning to embody these things more and more. And it has been said that there have been enlightened spiritual masters who have come. I'm reminded of the story of the Buddha. We often look to the story of Buddha uh, and to the Buddha himself as being an enlightened being. But he had to remember his enlightenment. He became enlightened over the course of his life. When you know his story, you know that in his early life, he was born and raised a prince. He grew up in a palace, but inside he felt a certain discontent. He felt that something was off about his experience and what it was that he knew of the world. He felt that there must be more. And so one day he did go out into the world and that is where he encountered four different types of people. So one of the people he encountered was an old person and then a sick person and then a corpse and then a holy person. These were the people that he saw and this was uh, an awakening for him, a revelation in and of itself before his uh, awakening of enlightenment, 
this was truly the beginning, or I would even say, and I'm sure it's been said by um, others who are much more learned in uh, Buddhism than myself and in the life of Buddha than myself, it was the discontent that he felt that was the root of the seat of whom it was that he eventually became because it was that discontent that led him outside the palace walls led him to know and to actually see that to be a human being means that there is suffering that suffering is a part of the world and that was something he wasn't aware of before so it was after this that the Buddha decided that he was going to join a group of spiritual people and he went to a way extreme type of spiritual practice that involved meditating day in and day out and hardly eating at all until he found his way to the way of moderation, the middle way as it is called. Now what is interesting is that Siddhartha, the Buddha, who became the Buddha rather, the enlightened one, uh, he actually left his palace grounds for the first time when he had his Saturn return. And I think that's a very powerful understanding of this story, that even though he felt that discontent, it wasn't until Saturn came back around to where it was when he was born. It wasn't until he had an encounter with Saturn astrologically that he had an encounter with Saturn in more practical ways in terms of actually looking at and addressing the physical realities of our human existence. But the thing is that even with the, the suffering that there is in being a human being, even with the, the things that actually are part of the human experience that are not necessarily Jupiterian or, or Neptunian, that aren't necessarily about things feeling really good and believing it and so it's so, even with the acknowledgement that there are things about our existence that are not necessarily the most beautiful experience, not necessarily the most ideal experience at all times, it is still sacred. It is all the planets and what they represent, the spiritual truths that they represent as planets, the intimate connection that we have with them as complex people. All of the cosmos and all of the planets are a part of us. And they represent these various needs and drives that we may have. Well, all of that is sacred. All of our human experience and the variety of it and the different parts of us and the different areas of us and the different desires and yearnings and wantings and joy and loves that we may experience, it is all sacred. As is Saturn. Neptune isn't more sacred than, than Saturn. Jupiter isn't more sacred than Saturn. They are all planets and they are all a part of all of us. They are part of everyone and everything. With Saturn going direct now, I think this is such a powerful symbol for us as a collective. So the reason I keep saying Neptune and Jupiter, Neptune and Jupiter are doing some interesting things right now as well. They will perfect for the third time out of three times, for the last time, their ongoing dance that they have been having throughout 2019. Now it is this energy that has defined much of 2019 for a lot of us out there. This energy can be at once inspiring, but also disappointing. It can fill us with possibility, but also delusion as well. And where it comes to Neptune squares, especially we've got Neptune squaring Jupiter. We have seen this in very profound ways in terms of scandals, in terms of what has not been honest. I'm thinking in particular of the college scandal that is so, so perfectly fitting of the symbol of Neptune and Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet that oversees universities. Um, and Neptune is about creating that illusion, which some people did. And as a result of the square, we are coming to understand that tension. We are coming to understand where it is that we've been caught up in illusion and where it is that we need to return to integrity. 
Now it is ultimately the fact that Saturn is going direct that I think is gonna balance out this energy that otherwise can feel pretty overpowering. Jupiter and Neptune both speaking in a conversation of tension uh, can be ungrounding. It can feel as if we get caught up in what it is that we believe or what it is that we want to see, what it is that we hope rather than what is. And that is going to be something that we are going to have to watch. All of us in at least one area of life may find ourselves getting carried away. But it is ultimately Saturn that is going to be the saving grace now. When we think of grace, right, that concept of grace is ultimately about being granted perspective. It is to be granted peace. That's what it means when people say that they were granted grace or they had an interaction with grace. It is to be able to see from a perspective of wisdom. And we often associate that understanding of grace with Neptune, sometimes with Jupiter, but it is Saturn that makes it real. It is Saturn that helps us to turn that grace into a changed life, into a better life, into a changed existence. And so, yes, we have to be mindful where it is that we are getting caught up in an emotion, caught up in an illusion, thinking that there's going to be a certain uh, savior even, right? Whether that's a person, place, thing, or situation that is going to save us from ourselves, that's where we have to be careful. It will be Saturn that ensures that grace counts for something. It is going to be Saturn that ensures that we don't then take whatever inspiration and, and squander it in simply an emotional roller coaster, a, a ride, if you will. But if we can use it to make other people's lives better, to make our own lives better, to help us to gain perspective, to help us to live more solidly on the sacred earth, well then we are using the sky well. And I think that motivation is gonna be there because we have other things happening this week as well. And one of the things that I am most excited about, I think of all the things I'm excited about is a beautiful trine between Mars and Pluto. Now, both Mars and Pluto right now are moving through Earth signs. It is Mars moving through the sign of Virgo and Pluto moving through the sign of Capricorn. Now, what is interesting as well is that Pluto right now is slowing down to a standstill of its own. It won't officially go direct until we move further to the end of the month, but this is energy we're gonna to start to feel now increasingly in terms of Pluto's growing presence. The fact that Pluto is going to be trying, is going to speak in supreme harmony with Mars, I think is a powerful symbol right now of truth, of perception, of strategy, of getting to the core of a matter, of a situation, of ourselves, so that we understand how to facilitate change from the inside out. It is a depth of perception into practical matters, that's the earth energy here, into practical matters that is going to be blessed the most at this time. Now it is Mars in the sign of Virgo and this is energy that has to do with the day to day and it has to do with the details as we move through our lives. This is also energy that has to do with recognizing the sacred in each of our smallest moments as we move through our day as well seeing the sacred infused in matter is part of what the Virgo energy is here to teach us. Now, Capricorn, all about the big picture, right? It's about success and power on the one hand, but it's also about purpose and destiny and legacy. Now, where is it now that we can bring together the power of the moment, the power of those small day-to-day -day routines and align them with legacy? align them with self-respect that ultimately allows us to manifest something that we can feel good about. That is part of the opportunity, but also part of what can help us to make the most gains at this time under this very fortunate, very beautiful Mars-Pluto trine. Both Mars and Pluto are the ancient and modern ruling planets of Scorpio, respectively. And 
I do think that some of the best of what Scorpio energy can be, how it can bless us at this time, may show itself to us. This is an energy that moves beyond the superficial and gets to the core. It's an energy of truth and authenticity, but it's a different type of truth than Uranus. Uranian truth is about the light bulb and the clarity and things moving very quickly and all of a sudden cutting through illusions and seeing things in a very stark light. Now it is Mars and Pluto both that are connected to the sign of Scorpio. Mars is the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio and Pluto is the modern ruling planet of Scorpio. And when you think about scorpionic energy, it is of truth, it is of authenticity, it is of willingness to see to the core of what is actually there and to see it as beautiful with its ugliness and all. To be willing to look at what it is that other people don't want to look at, but to be willing to look at it because it is true, because it is honest. And from there, knowing that whatever it is, it can be transformed into something truly beautiful. And in this way, it is scorpion energy, it is Mars and Pluto both that have an association with alchemy as well, the alchemical process, turning lead into gold. Now, this was an ancient uh, practice that people uh, engaged in, but it was understood as a philosophical practice as well, a metaphorical practice as well. And in modern contexts especially, it is about looking at what we consider lead in our life, in our experience, in our past, and turning it into a source of great wealth a precious part of us that we want to hold on to. Now, finally, one thing that is happening this week that I wanna mention as well, it's a bit of a, a, a less significant uh, astrological uh, conversation than are the others I've already spoken about, but Venus and Mercury both will be reaching out and speaking with Uranus. Now, this is a type of conversation uh, that astrologers call a quincunx. It is one that represents uh, surprise and sometimes awkwardness as well. And then you add the energy of Uranus, which itself can be quite awkward. You put it together and boy, there can be surprises a minute that we're not really sure what to do with uh, where it comes to matters of love and even when it comes to our communications as well. And so what this says is stay open, may not be the best time to plan surprises. However, if a surprise finds you and you approach it with curiosity, it just might delight you as well. What I love about this week for us, well, I am going to say Saturn moving direct. I absolutely love this energy. And I think that this energy is going to allow us to take a more grounded perspective to our lives. It's going to allow us to take what otherwise could be quite floaty energies, temporary feeling energies, and help us to make the most of it. It is gonna be this energy of Saturn moving forward that is going to provide the foundation towards living from a place of self-respect, which truly is one of the most rewarding ways to live. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to nadiashaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And I have a new book coming out, just two more weeks left of advanced copies sales. So advanced copies will ship out by Halloween. And other than that, the book will be available on Amazon on December 8th. That will be the official launch of the book. And it is called The Body and the Cosmos. This is very exciting. This was the working cover. We're now finalizing uh, the cover. It really is very fabulous. I hope you guys absolutely love it. I will present it to you in the coming days. Uh, and it really is a very beautiful cover. But this is the working cover. And this is pretty cool too. But it is um, an philosophical and astrological exploration of 
our physical being. And so I go through each and every sign in this book. Uh, there are exercises, there are meditations, there's a contemplation as well. And I think what makes this book unique is that I actually take um, the ideas of Plato in Timaeus and use it as a jumping off point towards exploring our physical connection to the sky through an astrological lens. And so I hope you absolutely love it. Thank you so much to everybody who's already ordered an advanced copy. I appreciate you guys so much. Advanced copies come with gifts. That's part of what makes it very exciting. So you do get uh, audio of the meditations emailed to you. The meditations that are in here, 12 meditations, one for each sign. You will get that as a free gift if you order the advanced package, the advanced copy. And that will be sent right around the time of shipping, just around Halloween. And also you will get this beautiful pendant. So this pendant has previously been sold on my website for $9.95. It is silver plated. And yes, you get this beautiful little pendant that says the universe is wise and loving. So I will actually be able to sell these pendants as well, hopefully um, in October. So there'll be a brief period where I will have these for sale. And of course, if you order the advanced copy of the book, you'll get it for free. And you'll also get a thank you card handwritten by me for you or to whoever it is that you want, uh, thanking you for being a friend and fan. And Synchronicity University is coming up as well. I am so excited about this. We are going to have six weeks of learning and fun together as part of the autumn session. And so for the autumn session coming up very soon, uh, we are going to have five classes and one bonus Q&A class. The classes are gonna include two follow-up classes on astrological magic. Those are the weeks leading up to Halloween that we're gonna do that. We'll have a class looking at Jupiter through the signs and houses. Another looking at Pluto through the signs and houses. I've got a lot to say about Pluto, that's for sure. Um, and also electional, introduction to electional astrology, which is the astrology of choosing the right date for whatever it is that you desire to do. Like December 8th for launching a book. December 8th is under the light of um, the Jupiter and Uranus trine. That happens about once every five years or so, those two planets do trine. I find that to be a very fortunate energy. And the last time they trined is when I launched Synchronicity University. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but it is now that with the launch of this book, I will be tapping into that energy again. So December 8th is the official launch, but again, advanced copies are available um, on my website right now. I hope you absolutely love this book and I hope you absolutely love the classes. You can sign up now. Classes are beginning very, very soon and we always have so much fun together. I am so thankful to everybody who has already signed up. Thank you to my students past and present and very soon future, which will become present as well. I have lots of events coming up and I'm so excited to announce that I am going to be speaking in Fort Lauderdale. And I will literally be speaking the day before I get on the cruise. And so, yes, I have a cruise event coming up that I've been talking about. It will be fabulous. Um, and we will be part of an amazing experience being out in the middle of the ocean uh, with each other, sharing astrology every single day. And I think that is gonna be very rewarding. I am going to participate with you. I'll be leading some of the seminars as well. I will be one of many world-renowned astrologers who are going to be on board teaching. And so I look forward to meeting you on board. But if it is that you want to come a day early and hang out um, at my talk, or if it is that you can't get on board but you'd like to see me in person, I will be teaching in Fort Lauderdale. So we have this whole day planned, which is very exciting. So the ship leaves on Sunday, if I remember correctly, Sunday the 12th. And so the uh, teaching I'll be doing is on uh, Saturday the 11th of January. And so what am I uh, going to be teaching? Well, in the morning there is a lecture on the 2020s from Earth to Air. And so I'm gonna have a lot to say about that. I am so fascinated about this. I already put a decade ahead horoscope up on YouTube so you can watch that. Uh, but we'll be talking about that in the morning. I'm trying to figure out maybe 
I'll try to do like an official book launch party. So we'll see if we can squeeze that in. But I also know that in the afternoon, I'll be teaching a workshop called Past Lives in the Astrology Chart. So we'll have a lot of fun in Florida. If you are anywhere near Florida and you would like to come out and you'd like to get a hug and you'd like to get a copy of my book signed by me in person, uh, or you just want to come and learn something uh, having to do with astrology, having to do with the decade ahead, having to do with past life in the astrology chart, I would love to meet you there. And so I look forward to meeting you there and of course on board this fabulous cruise that I'll be doing as well. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun and links are in the description below for just about everything that I've spoken about so far. And thank you. Thank you to everybody who's here. I'm hoping that I made it to the premiere. So if I'm doing a premiere, hello to my premiere people and to everybody catching this on the replay. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. And um, thank you for watching. And I look forward to hanging out with you in person, in Florida, in all the other places I'm gonna be in 2020. I'm gonna be in Istanbul. I'm gonna be in Seattle. I'm gonna be in Colorado. I may be other places as well. I have to check out my schedule, but yeah, I'll, I'll be out and about and I look forward to meeting you in person. And of course, online, we will stay connected online as well. Thank you for watching. It'll be a great week, enjoy.